Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi, and in this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create an action that's going to turn any color corrected photo into a faded black and white uh, photo with a vintage cross process look like the one you see right here. Now, I'm going to make this exercise file as well as the finished action available for download so you guys can actually download the action and use it or you can download just to see how we actually uh, got there and, and compare it to kind of what you have at the end of this tutorial. So let's get started. It, I'm using Lightroom right now to browse my photos. Um, it doesn't really matter how you get your photo into Photoshop. Just take your color corrected photo right into Photoshop now. All right, now I like to keep my actions very organized. So I've created a new folder uh, called SR Lounge Toots. All of our actions that we're creating throughout the Photoshop series is going to go into this SR Lounge Toots folder. You guys can call it whatever you guys like, but I do recommend you guys keep your actions organized into folders um, based on you know stylized groupings or whatever you guys like, and then give your actions very specific names so you guys can actually understand what they are. So we're going to create this action now. I'm going to go to the new action icon down at the bottom of the panel, and we're going to give it a good name that will actually know what it is because uh, I, I find I get really confused when I have actions that are called like, you know. Uh, black and white Hollywood 5 or something like that. It's really hard for me to understand what that action was. Alright, so we're going to call this faded black and white cross. Again, pick a name that kind of works for you guys. Once you hit OK, it's going to start the recording process. You'll know that uh, it's recording because the little red recording icon is selected right now. And so now we're recording every single thing that we're going to be doing uh, in Photoshop. All right, so when I'm creating a action, when I'm creating an action that I want to be able to apply across multiple photos, I want to make that action very generalized, and I also want to make it very editable, because not every single image is going to be the exact same, and I do want to kind of make adjustments on an image-to-image -image basis. So the first thing is, is I always start each action with a color-corrected photo, or that way these actions will work across multiple photos. If I know that every photo coming in is color-corrected, the action should apply the exact same way to each one. The other thing I do is I typically will make each step of the action more powerful than it needs to be and then I'll adjust the actual effect or the opacity down so that later on if I want to I can go back and make adjustments on a photo by photo basis to kind of strengthen certain effects here and there. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is jump the background to a new layer by hitting control plus J and then I'm going to create, I'm going to rename this layer to my sharpening layer. And call it sharpening layer. And then hit enter and you'll notice that it records that step right here. It created our jump and then our uh, rename right here in the set current layer. Next I'm going to do is I'm going to actually sharpen this layer because that is our sharpening layer. So I'm going to go down to sharpen from our filter menu, use unsharpen mask, um, and then we're going to create a pretty heavy sharpening effect. Again, we're going to be adjusting it down. So I'm going to create uh, an amount of 100% and a radius of 5. Again, this is pretty powerful, but we're going to actually adjust the opacity of this down to 50%. So right here in the opacity, I'm going to hit 50, and then make sure you hit Enter afterwards so that it records that process in your action. All right, we're good with the sharpening mask. We now have a sharpening mask that we can adjust the opacity up and down uh, to control it however we like. Now we're going to start creating adjustment layers. I'm going to start first by creating a black and white adjustment layer. And I don't really need to do anything to this adjustment layer. I find that uh, the standard black and white actually works really well for this. If I start adjusting these tones in here, it's going to not work very well for uh, for a lot of images that have different types of color tones. So I leave it neutral and then you know on an image by image basis you guys can go back and adjust from there. But we will rename this to, we'll call this BW layer. Alright, next thing I'm going to create another adjustment layer. We're going to go this time to exposure. Now the exposure is where we're going to get our fade effect and how we're going to do that, actually let me rename this first so I don't forget. So we're going to call this fade layer. So how this works is the exposure dial right here is going to be adjusting the highlight tones, your offset is affecting your midtones, and your gamma correction is affecting your shadows. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust so that basically we're pulling all of our ranges into the midtone area and then brightening it up so it has this nice fade to it. And you'll see exactly what I mean as we get started. So again, I'm going to make this effect a little bit heavier than it needs to be. We're going to adjust exposure down to 1.5. We'll bring the offset up and then we'll bring the gamma correction down and we'll make a little bit of fine tune here and there too to kind of get it right but 
that's about right. I want a little bit higher on the exposure just to bring back a little bit of that highlight contrast, just a bit. Actually, let's bring it down and we'll just kind of adjust from the uh, opacity. That fade is about right. Again, it's going to be more powerful than we need it to be. That's about where I want it for the action. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dial this down to, say, 75%. Okay, and then hit Enter to set that uh, opacity level for that layer. And so you can see that for an image that we want more faded, all we're going to do is we're going to apply the action and then drag the fade layer up or down, uh, depending on what kind of effect we want. All right, so let's create our last layer. And the last layer is going to be a curves layer. This is where we're going to get our crossed feel, our cross process feel. So I'm going to recreate, uh, I'm going to rename this to cross layer. And again, we're, if you guys follow the uh, vintage cross tutorials that we previously did, you'll know exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to go to our red channel. Uh, we're going to create a little helix here in our curves. I'm going to adjust the reds up pretty high in the highlights. I'm going to pull it down in the shadows. Now I want this to be kind of a, a warmer effect, which is why I'm, I'm pulling my reds up higher than I'm going to do with my greens and my blues. But with the greens, I'm going to do the same thing in the highlights, not quite as high as the reds. I'm also going to pull it down in the shadows. And my blues, I'm going to do the opposite by pulling it down in the highlights and then up in the shadows. We'll make a, a few minor adjustments just to get this looking kind of right. I want a little bit less green up here and a little bit less green, or sorry, a little more green in the highlights, a little less in the shadows. And then with the reds, I think we can pull it down just a tiny bit. It's a little bit high. All right, and then I'm going to adjust this cross layer to, let's say, about 60%. Okay. So now we have our finished effect. I'm going to hit stop on my action. So it stops recording what I'm doing. And what you now see is a completely editable action. So from our cross layer all the way to our sharpening layer, everything is editable. If I want to zoom in, check out if it's sharp enough, I say, oh, you know, I want it to be a little bit sharper. I'm going to add a little bit of extra sharpening. Um, we can say, okay, maybe the cross layer is a little bit too heavy in effect. I can pull it down a little bit and make photo by photo adjustments. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this out and we're going to test our action that we just did on another photo. So let's close this out and just select any other, uh, any other uh, basic color corrected photo to try it on. So we're going to select this image. Um, I'm going to go edit in Photoshop. We're going to select our action and we're going to hit play. And if we did everything right, we should have the exact same effect on another color corrected photo. And it looks great how it is. If I want, I can make adjustments and go from there. All right, guys, hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Enjoy the action and be sure to post your creations on srlounge.com on this article, as well as on our Facebook page to kind of show the community what you've done. Have fun, guys.